Hi everybody, this is Michael Smiley coming at you with another review video. Um, sorry I haven't posted in a while. Um, I had an electrical fire at my house as some of you may or may not know. Um, so I've been having to deal with a lot of stress and everything lately. Um, so getting past that. Um, I want to talk about uh, Supergirl season four. So I just finished. I binge watched season four in like two days, and um, it was, in my opinion, uh, Supergirl's best season. It had the the. It was so progressive to the story, and it had. Um, such detail behind everything and everything that was transpiring had a meaning and um, up until this point the villains have been a person that you could you know that Supergirl's been able to you know fight and this time it's much more than that um, it's very much representative of our political and world climate right now when it comes to um, racism and discrimination and everything. And um, I don't want that to turn any viewers off from the show because if there's any show on TV that should be representing today's climate is Supergirl. Supergirl is about, well, she's literally from another planet, so she's an alien. And um, she's here to, she made Earth her home and she defends it. And obviously, um, you're not going to get all good seeds when you... Um, when there's, you know, a group of individuals or whatever. Like, not all humans are good. Not all aliens are going to be good either. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, <clears throat> but there are those that fight for what they believe is right. Um, so... I know that a lot of people think that there's an agenda behind season four of Supergirl and that it's from a very democratic standpoint because it's against racism, discrimination, um, the whole nine yards. But it's so much more than that. Yes, it's like holding up a mirror to what's going on in our country today in 2019, but um, they're very real issues, and, um, you know, like I said, if there's any, any show that should represent a mirror and reflection of ourselves is Supergirl, um, because it deals with all issues, it deals with all types of people, um, from all kinds of background, and that's why I really love about it, is because it's so, um, this one had season four had so much character development, which I, I do believe that each season of Supergirl just got better than the previous seasons. Um, so I do think that it's still progressing, but the writers were on fire this season. Like they were on their, their A game because they really wanted to make the best possible season. And that's um that's that's as a whole because there's so much things that are going on um you know they were more reliant on story on story and character development and backgrounds and everything um so instead of like less action they just shifted things a little bit and made it flow way more smoothly, it was more natural, um, <clears throat> and, um, you know, decisions do have consequences, whether they're good or bad, um, and 
they were made this season, probably now more than ever. And I really love how, through everything, Supergirl still had hope for humanity, even though she wanted to be naive or turn a, not turn a blind eye, but didn't want to think about how much evil is actually in the world and how she always still had hope in humanity. And I think that that's a good point that we need to move forward with is yes, there is bad people in the world, but we need to have faith and hope that things will change for the better, or that <clears throat> there is more good than evil in the world. And I, I think that the season made a very valid point and I think that it was the strongest season by far. Like, season four of Supergirl crushed the first three seasons and really had a lot of heart and soul. And that's what I really love about it. <clears throat> I I think that the actors have done an amazing job. Um, one of the villains started off as a good guy who wanted to have hope. Um and life happened and it made him a bad guy but he still thought that he was doing good because of the way that things turned out and good is a point of view it really is because everybody thinks that what they're doing is good but it doesn't necessarily translate into good actions um like you have, you're trying to do good, but with the wrong intentions, I guess. Kind of what I want to say. And the guy that plays for Ben Lockwood is, um, he was also in Once Upon a Time as um, Jacqueline Hyde, and he was also in uh, Being Human as the Vampire. I forgot what his name is. He's a really great actor. He really uh, stretched his acting skills and went, and he went for it, and it paid off. <clears throat> I think that he was a really good villain because he was so good in the beginning, and then because of, and that's what I really love about, like, not what I love about villains, but. You can have, you can, if there is any kind of, like, I, I, I would rather prefer to see a villain who had a really horrible background and for you to kind of justify their actions or them justifying their actions versus somebody that's, you know, just out for power and they're just killing people just because. And they're just annoying. Um... It's so much deeper and more complex when it's from, you know, life happening to you or some sort of huge tragic event that happened to them that turned them into the way that they are. Because, and it all just, it also depends on the actor too, or the actress, because um, they're the ones that really have to go out there and you know the edge of their acting abilities and they really have to push forward and everything and I really do think that this guy did absolutely excellent at uh, Ben Lockwood I really I really do think that he's a great actor um, and that he did an excellent job and but I, I really do obviously I think that he went about it the wrong way because you know he had ideas and he Father, what he thought was right, but it it wasn't. It had consequences. It was it was bad in his mind. It was good, but in reality, it was bad. Um, and I just wanted to throw punch him in every scene that he was in because it's just like, yes, we get it. You have a cause, though. But like, <clears throat> um. But anyway, the. And they finally introduced Lex Luthor into the CW universe in the whole Arrowverse. And um, I do wholeheartedly believe that they did 
an outstanding casting choice for Lex Luthor. Um, I forgot what the actor's name is. Man, I should really get this down pack. But um, the guy that played for Lex Luthor, and I'm actually gonna look him up. Same thing with Ben Lockwood, because it's really bugging me now. Okay, so Ben Lockwood is actually Agent Liberty. Um, that's why he goes by in Supergirl. And his name is Sam Whitwer. I hope I'm saying that right. And Lex Luthor. Is John Cryer. Um, so, John Cryer is such an amazing, like, he is on point with his portrayal as Lex Luthor. He is Lex Luthor. I don't think that there is one single other Lex Luthor that portrays Lex Luthor like John Cryer does. Um, I think that he was a great, uh, casting choice. And he went above and beyond. He was just natural. And um, you could really believe that he was the mastermind behind so many things that happened during the show. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, I'm, something that I do want to point out, though... As I know that the writers have stated before that um, they were doing a slow burn on making Lena the villain against, or that they were eventually going to put Lena Luther against um, Supergirl. But I really don't like that. I don't like that. I like, I, I, I don't like, I love. And I really do love uh, Lena Luther as a character because she has been told all of her life that she is just like her family and everything, and she just really went against all odds to be the all of uh, the oddball out of her family. I mean, yes, yeah, she is intelligent like them, but she she does struggle with the dark side, but she. Um, she really always comes out on the other end on the good side. And I really don't, and I love her friendship with Kara, a.k.a. Supergirl. And I really, 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 really despise the fact that they are building up this tension that's going to be obvious of put, pitting... Um, Lena Luther against Supergirl, which I absolutely despise. I don't think that it's a good idea. I think that they should, you know, yell it out, not fight it out. Um, because I love both characters, and I, I think that it's a tragic mistake to undo all the good that Lena, that Lena has done. I, I think that it's a mistake because... They're not only undoing everything, like, she's a good person, and I don't like the fact that they're trying to make her a bad guy just because the other Luthers are bad. Um, because she has fought against all odds, and she has overcame all odds to be the good guy. And, and yes, there is some moral grounds where she is on the fence about, and she, you know, tip, you know, tiptoes that fine line. But she still always is the good guy. She has good intentions, um, and she wants the best for everyone. And I truly love the character. She is one of 
my favorite characters of the entire series, and I really hate the fact that they're trying to make her bad, or that that's the seeming direction that they're making her. And I know that my patience is going to wear, wear very thin for Season 5, because there's just so much that happens in Season 4, and everything is going to have such a huge repercussion and cause so many events for Season 5. Um, and the finale really does set up not only Season 5, but the biggest DC crossover on television, which... I'm entirely excited about, but it's like, <sighs> um, it, it makes you nervous because, spoiler alert, about the comics, um, in the comics, Crisis on Infinite Earths, or whatever it's called, um, Supergirl and the Flash end up dying. Now, hopefully, they're going to change that because, as we saw in the last, um, <coughs> the last crossover event, um, Arrow clearly made a deal with the Monitor, or whatever he calls himself, and um, tries to, you know, it's assumed and believed that he is trading his life for Supergirls and um, The Flash. And it's pretty obvious because the eighth and final season of Arrow is only 10 episodes long or something like that. And as far as I know, it's a full-blown season for The Flash and Supergirl, so, which is consists of like 22 or 23 episodes. Um, so hopefully that's the the fact of the matter um and i really hope that they put this uh it's not a rivalry uh put this little rift between lena and supergirl behind everyone and to fight the bigger fight which is against lex luthor and the Lothiathan or Leviathan or whatever they call themselves. It's an organization of people that's going to obviously be the, the big bad of season five for Supergirl. And um, I can't wait for that. Um, I love this show so much because there's so much that goes on. There's so much heart and soul into the show. And... Um, I really do love each and every character in their own way, and I really, really love Brainy from the... They made him a, a more complex three-dimensional character instead of just a, you know, the comic relief of it all. They really did um, give him more to do in Season 4, and I really hope that they continue to do that in Season 5. Um, another uh, character that I absolutely love is Dreamer. Um, <clears throat> I love how much compassion she has for others. I love um, that she's cute and innocent and everything, and that she really wants to help others. Um, I love her backstory. I love like I love that they made her three dimensional. Uh, I love her power. I just, I just, I love everything about Dreamer. So I'm really, 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 really happy to see the interaction between Brainy and Dreamer, and then of course the other cast and stuff like that. Um, I uh, there's so much that happens this season, and I really don't want to spoil it all for anyone. So I really hope that um, everybody checks it out. Obviously, the Supergirl airs on the CW network, and now they can watch season four on Netflix. Well, seasons one through four on Netflix. So, if you're looking for a good superhero show, Supergirl um, is on Netflix. So, if you haven't watched it, check it out. Each season does get better. Um... The only 
the only complaint really that I have because season four was so good and the writers did such an amazing job and the cast did such an amazing job and the directors and everything the only complaint that I really really had was the absence of Cat Grant um, because she has oh, she has such a ruthless humor to her and but she really does have a heart of gold she has a heart of gold and she's ruthless at the same time equally I guess um, <clears throat> and I would have loved to see her and her reaction or her just uh, ruthless output of everything that just happened in season four so I really do hope that they bring her back in season five because she is greatly missed right now and it you know, you really do. There's just some things that you miss about certain things or certain people that, you know, you just wish you had more of or wish came back, you know, that sort of thing. And I think that Cat Grant is that one for me for Supergirl. Um, but other than that, they had a pretty solid, excellent season. So... Anyway, guys, if you like my review, just make sure you subscribe to my channel, like, and comment on the video below, or on this video, but comment below. And until, until next time, have a great day, everybody.